بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اعزاء طلب اور لیکچر ابو دنیز الفولپس نیز الفولپس ار ای بیتنکولیتیت پورشن اف ادیمیتیس میوکوزی اف دی نوز اور پارا نیزل سائنسز دی ار دیوائیدیت انتو تو مین تائپس either simple ethmoidal polyps, which are the majority, and anthrocoanal or Killian's polyp. Nasal polyps can also be presenting features of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis and sinonasal malignancy. Etiology and associated disease The primary cause of nasal polyps is unknown, but nasal polyps are associated with chronic rhinosinusitis, allergic rhinitis, asthma, aspirin intolerance. The Samter's triad. This is a triad consists of nasal polyps, asthma and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs intolerance. The nasal polyps also are associated with allergic fungal rhinosinusitis with cystic fibrosis and mucociliary dysfunctions like Yang syndrome and primary ciliary dyskinesia, Cartagenal syndrome. The histology of the nasal polyps. Nasal polyps are characterized by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, thickening of the epithelial basement membrane, and a few nerve endings. So they are insensitive to touch because of the few nerve endings. The stroma of nasal polyps is edematous. Eosinophil cells are the most commonly identified inflammatory cells occurring in 80 to 90 percent of polyps, while the neutrophils in 7 percent of polyps. This is the histology of the nasal polyps. Shows the covering of the polyps by respiratory epithelium, pseudostrophied ciliated columnar epithelium and the edema of the citroma with the presence of the eosinophils. We start with the symbol ethmoidal polyps. Site of origin of symbol ethmoidal polyps, they are multiple polyps, always arise from the lateral wall of the nose usually from the middle meters, from the area called osteometal complex. And the common signs are ancinate process, bulla ethmoidalis, and medial surface of the middle turbinate. This is a coronal section through the osteometal complex, shows the most common site of origin of simple ethmoidal polyps. They arise from the bulla ethmoidalis, which contains the medial group of ethmoidal air cells, and from the ancinate process, and from the medial surface of the middle turbinate. This is the middle turbinate. And this area called osteometal complex. The middle meters, the ancinate process, the bulla ethmoidalis and the middle turbinate. The symptoms of simple ethmoidal polyps are nasal obstruction, hypoosmia or anosmia, headache, sneezing, watery rhinorrhea, bilateral multiple polyps, protruding protruding from the nostrils. 
the signs of symbol ethmoidal polyps the symbol ethmoidal polyps are smooth glistening grape like masses مثل عناقيد العنب often pale in color they are pale in color because there are few blood vessels and with the edema of the citrum may be sessile or pedunculated usually pedunculated and insensitive to touch because of the few nerve endings long standing cases may present with broadening of nose and increase in intercanthal distance this picture shows the patient with simple ethmoidal polyps they are multiple bilateral and the longest standing simple ethmoidal polyps associated with the broadening of the nasal bridge and increase in the intercanthal distance coronal ct scan of the paranasal sinuses shows the complete opacity of the ethmoidal sinuses with expansion of the sinuses without evidence of bone destruction with complete obstruction of the osteomyotal complex treatment of simple ethmoidal polyps for small nasal polyps we give betamethasone drops two drops twice daily for two weeks followed by flex flexonase two sprays once daily both nostrils for three months for large nasal polyps we start with oral prednisolone 30 mg once daily for one week followed by flexonase two sprays twice daily for three months if medical treatment fails then we shift to surgical removal of obstructive polyps by functional endoscopic sinus surgery which is called fes while the anterocoanal or kilian's polyp epidemiology of the anterocoanal polyp represent only approximately 3 to 6% of sinonasal polyps the exact etiology is not known unlike other sinonasal polyps anterocoanal polyps are usually found in non atopic patients they are most commonly seen in children and adolescent so they are occurs in younger age group they are slightly more common in males compared to females the anterocoanal polyps are benign polypoid lesion arising from the maxillary antrum and they extend into the coene the coene is the posterior opening of the nasal cavity so it's called anterocoanal polyp the polyp arise from the lining of the maxillary antrum from the posterior inferior walls and even from the medial and lateral walls of the maxillary antrum and then extend into the nasal cavity through the maxillary antrum usually we found widening of the ostium of the maxillary antrum due to expansion of the polyp with extension of the polyp from the maxillary antrum into the nasal cavity and then it extends into the nasopharynx into the coene and then into the nasopharynx and even to the oropharynx so it's called anterocoanal polyp which means the polyp extends from the maxillary antrum into the coene which is the posterior opening of the nasal cavity and usually anterocoanal polyps have three components the cystic component 
which arise from the maxillary antrum and the solid component which is found in the nasal cavity and even nasopharynx and the oropharynx and the pedicle which connect the cystic component with the solid component. It is very large polyp and usually unilateral. This is the anterocoanal polyp extends into the oropharynx. And this is the nasal component of the anterocoanal polyp. The presenting symptoms of anterocoanal polyps are nasal obstruction, rhinorrhea, snoring, headache, mouth breathing, anosmia, halitosis, dyspnea, and dysphonia. The plain x-ray of the paranasal sinuses shows complete opacity, unilateral opacity of the maxillary sinus, complete opacity, and the lateral x-ray of the nasopharynx shows the, nas the nasopharyngeal component. There is a nasopharyngeal mass seen in the uh, posterior part of the nasopharynx. CT scan, coronal CT scan of the paranasal sinuses shows complete opacity of the affected sinus with expansion of, the, of, of that sinus without evidence of bone erosion with widening of the ostium of the maxillary sinus and there is a nasal component. The treatment of anterocoronal polyp is always surgical. Previously, simple polypectomy and caldwell leck procedure were preferred method for surgical treatment of anterocoronal polyps. <clears throat> but nowadays, we remove the anterocoronal polyp through functional endoscopic sinus surgery. This is the Caldwell uh, procedure. We do sublabial incision and then we do an opening of the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus with the removal of the polyp and the complete removal of the mucosal lining of the maxillary antrum and we do inferior metal anterostomy. We do an opening in the inferior meatus between the maxillary antrum and the nasal cavity for drainage and for aeration of the maxillary antrum and this procedure used to, recur to, to prevent recurrence of the anterocoanal polyps. The comparison between the symbol ethmoidal polyp and anterocoanal polyp in symbol ethmoidal polyp they are seen in adults Allergy is the common cause. There are multiple bunch of grapes, little anaqid al anab, arise from the ethmoidal labyrinth, seen easily on anterior rhinoscopy. They are mostly bilateral, and the recurrence is common. While the anterocoanal polyp, seen in children and adolescent, are usually found in non atopic patients and anterocoanal polyp usually single arise from the maxillary antrum seen commonly in post nasal examination and it is usually unilateral and the recurrence rate is less common key points about nasal polyps in general in most cases the etiology of nasal polyps is unknown the osteometal complex is the most common site. Unilateral polyps should always be regarded with suspicion and histopathological examination is needed to rule out malignancy except in the angiofibroma of teenage males. The angiofibroma is the most common benign tumor of the nasopharynx.
and they are occurs exclusively in adolescent males. Here, the biopsy is contraindicated in angiofibroma because it is highly vascular. Good luck.